Yellowstone supervolcano is more active than first thought, the study reveals. This is on The Conversation and University of uh, Glasgow. The last eruption from Yellowstone National Park over two million years ago, the super eruption that is, appears to have been two smaller eruptions, more than 6,000 years apart. By taking samples from the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff created by the eruptions, scientists have used a rock clock dating technique to determine the supervolcano was more active than initially thought. The first eruption is believed to have ejected 2,200 cubic kilometers of magma, and the second eruption ejected 290 cubic kilometers, thus more than 6,000 years later that it did that. And uh, reading more from the University of Glasgow, the rock clock sheds new light on size and frequency of Yellowstone super eruptions. A volcanic super eruption in America's Yellowstone National Park two million years ago was actually two smaller eruptions 6,000 years apart, new research has revealed. Scientists at the Scottish University's Environmental Research Center, SUERC, and Washington State University in the U.S. have used a rock clock dating technique to more precisely determine when volcanic rock samples from the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff were created. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, home to the largest volcano system in North America, the researchers' findings paint a new picture of a volcano which is more active than previously thought and could help to develop understanding of the chances of another super eruption in the future. Previously, the Huckleberry Ridge eruption was believed to be the fourth largest known to science. The new ages for each Huckleberry Ridge eruption reduce the volume of the first event to 2,200 cubic kilometers of magma, roughly 12% less than previously thought. However, it still remains one of the largest known to have ever occurred on Earth and would have darkened the skies with ash from Southern California all the way to the Mississippi River. The second eruption, 290 cubic kilometers, took place more than 6,000 years later. Scientists dated the Huckleberry Ridge samples at the NERC Argon Isotope Facility in East Kilbride using a technique known as Argon-Argon dating. Dr. Darren Mark of the University of Glasgow, who led the research at SUERC, said, Argon-Argon dating involves using a mass spectrometer to measure the, radio, the ratio of radioactive potassium in a sample of rock to its decay product, which is argon. We know that the half-life of this radioactive decay is 1.25 billion years, and so we can determine the age of any given rock. The older the rock is, the more argon we'll find in it. Examining the radioactive decay essentially allows us to use rocks to incredibly slow, as incredibly slow clocks. At SUERC, we continually refine the technique to allow us to make more accurate measurements, increasing the precision of our measurements gives us a sharper lens to examine events from the distant past and enrich our understanding of Earth history, such as the cycle of Yellowstone eruptions. Ben Ellis of Washington State University School of the Environment said, the Yellowstone volcano's previous behavior is the best guide of what it will do in the future. This research suggests explosive volcanism from Yellowstone is more frequent than previously thought. The study was funded by Natural Environment Research Council, National Science Edu Foundation, and uh, this is on the conversation and also the University of Glasgow. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon 
most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.